Even though the U.S. went to war with Iraq over weapons of mass destruction, the world's biggest biological weapons program was developed in the Soviet Union. Officially, that's all stopped. But to this day, Russia continues to resist U.S. inspection of its military biological research labs. But we had no trouble finding dangerous biological materials in facilities throughout Russia and Kazakhstan. This complex in Kazakhstan houses some of the world's deadliest killers. It's the local version of America's Centers for Disease Control. In these primitive labs, Dr. Bakhtiar Suleymenov has preserved hundreds of samples of the most hazardous bacteria or pathogens known to man, all collected from natural outbreaks of disease in this former Soviet Republic. How dangerous are the pathogens that we're going to see in, in the refrigerator? Yes, the diseases we work with are very dangerous. Foremost among them, the plague. So th this is the fridge with the, with the cultures in it. Yes. And if this got loose somehow, how much damage could it cause? How many people could it kill? This is a purified strain of the plague. If it was stolen, it could start an epidemic. He's talking about the same germ that causes bubonic plague. And it's not the only deadly bacteria stored here. This is cholera. And here? This is a, a very dangerous room then. Yes. This is the most dangerous room in Kazakhstan. The most dangerous room with the most inadequate security. These wax seals and simple padlocks are hardly enough to keep deadly diseases out of the hands of terrorists. And Dr. Suleymanov knows it. Why should anybody be confident that these flimsy fridges and the tiny little wax seals should be enough to stop anybody with bad intentions coming and stealing this? We know it's not enough, but that's all we can afford. Without American help, we wouldn't even have that. This wall is an example of the kind of security American money can buy. It may not look like much, concrete and barbed wire, but it has already kept intruders out. Before that, there was nothing separating would-be terrorists from the dangerous biological agents that are stored inside the Institute. The people responsible for funding this security system are Senator Richard Lugar and former Senator Sam Nunn, who in 1991 established the U.S. program that helps former Soviet republics get rid of their weapons of mass destruction and keep them out of the hands of terrorists and rogue states. The way I view it, Christiane, is that we're in a race. We're in a race with terrorists. They're trying to get chemical, biological, nuclear weapons. We're trying to prevent it. They're running, we're walking. We're not doing enough. What's even more frightening than Kazakhstan's germ storehouse is what's kept in the former biological weapons lab in Obolensk, Russia. That's where deadly germs like those collected in Kazakhstan were genetically altered to become even better killers. Here too, Nan and Lugar stepped into a dangerous vacuum. We put security around the place where we found it, first of all, we just barbed wire fence and one guard. And, and deadly pathogens on the third floor that would have killed about everybody in the, in the world. So this is dangerous stuff. So dangerous that in 1972, President Richard Nixon negotiated an international treaty with the Soviet Union that obligated both countries to end their biological weapons programs. The United States of America will renounce the use of any form of deadly biological weapons that either kill or incapacitate. But although the Soviets publicly agreed to stop, secretly they built the world's biggest biological weapons program, eventually employing 60,000 scientists. This was the Soviet Union's main biological weapons test site in Kazakhstan abandoned when the empire disintegrated. Cleanup crews later uncovered tons of buried anthrax and stacks of cages for monkeys that were used in deadly experiments. They also uncovered details of a mysterious outbreak of smallpox 30 years ago that hit a small town miles away from this test site.
Is there any way this outbreak of smallpox on the island could have been from natural causes? Absolutely not. General Pyotr Burgasov was then the Soviet Union's deputy health minister. When he notified the head of the KGB that a bioweapons test had gone awry, Burgasov was told to keep quiet, which he did for more than 30 years. 20 gram. 20 gram. Only 20 grams of smallpox was released before it infected a live target. Now that's a biological weapon. What if the same small amount, 20 grams, was released in Times Square in New York or in the metro underground stations here in Moscow? What would the effect be? If 30 people inhaled it, they would infect 300, and it would start an epidemic of smallpox. Smallpox is highly infectious, and in aerosol form, it would be the ultimate terrorist weapon. Although the Russians have shown the U.S. some of their major biological weapons facilities, there are still a lot of secrets that only people like Igor Domoradsky are willing to talk about. For 20 years, he was heavily involved in the program, and he's written a book about it called BioWarrior. How far did the Soviet Union get in manipulating these dangerous biosubstances? We had the most success with the plague. The bacteria we developed was immune to antibiotics and very deadly. In the 80s, we switched to anthrax. Would anybody you know be tempted to sell that knowledge? Certainly nobody I know would consider doing that. But I can't rule out that possibility. One of the first things the new Russian president Boris Yeltsin did when communism collapsed was to disband the biological weapons program and cut off its funds. But this victory for disarmament created a new set of problems. Thousands of scientists like Seva Kisilyev, once part of a pampered elite, suddenly were out of a job. It was dramatic. Of course it was. I think about 25, 30 percent, they, uh, they destroy his life completely. We lost salary. We lost everything. That's when the United States made an offer of cash grants to all the out-of-work bioweaponeers to keep them in Russia working on commercial biotech projects like this one in return for opening their labs to inspection by the U.S. The idea was to prevent a brain drain and dangerous knowledge leaking out to rogue states. And if you hadn't had this U.S. funding, where would you be? You can imagine the consequences. Firing some people, closing some projects. Peter Sveshnikov's Microbiology Institute qualified for these funds. Developing a portable sensor for the U.S. Department of Defense to detect a biological attack. So if you uh, see blue, that yes, means it's this, detected this, anthrax. This deep blue uh, shows, uh, uh, let's say, a very positive probe. But it's unlikely his prototype will ever go into production because Americans are still deeply suspicious of Russia. Especially conservative congressmen like Duncan Hunter of California. He claims millions of dollars of non Luger funds have been wasted. And he's angry that Americans have never been permitted to inspect Russia's four military biological research labs. You can't simply have a Russian uh, bureaucrat meet you at the door, reach out and take your cash, and then close the door in your face and say you can't watch how they spend that money. But Senators Nan and Lugar say delaying funds to disarm Russia's weapons of mass destruction is like shooting yourself in the foot. Uh, it's ridiculous because the American people, given an opportunity, want these weapons to be destroyed. I want them to be destroyed. Uh, we really have to keep our eye on the ball as opposed to our quibbling in the Congress. Uh, keeping weapons of mass destruction out of the hands of terrorists should be the organizing security principle of the 21st century. When we spoke to Nan Luga, and they said they were deeply troubled that yourself and others in Congress are sort of needlessly holding up crucial programs which are a matter of the highest national security.
Senator Luger's idealism has to be accompanied by what I would call responsible accountability. Right now, behind closed doors, we don't know that the biological programs, especially at those four major sites, aren't continuing, and we need the Russians to let us in and let us look around. Senators Nan and Lugar have been trying to get those sites open for years, but they say the cooperation they are getting in Russia is better than no cooperation at all. We asked General Anatoly Vorobiev, once number two in the secret Soviet program, if Russia still had anything to hide. You have said that the top priority is for America and Russia to work together to contain this threat. And yet, Russia is still denying access to some of its most sensitive sites. And the people in Congress who are giving you the money to try to contain this and secure this are saying, how can we be sure that no bioweapons development production is going on? I can give you my guarantee that there is no production of biological weapons at the military facilities. The real danger is that someone else will produce a biological weapon and release it in a city subway. Do you think the world today is prepared to deal with a bio-terrorist attack? 